Hi, Roy here, Yard of Random Books, and I'm going to make a video that's the end of the Autumn Amour reading challenge. So that's four weeks, September, reading romance books. And the challenge was devised by the Bookish Bryants, and their link is down below. Uh, so this is the fourth week. Fourth prompt is traditionally published or independently published. And I went for a traditionally published book, Silver Thor by Catherine Anderson, which I found in a charity shop, first of a series called Mystic Creek. Uh, but I think before I do that, I'll just reflect a bit on what it's like being a complete newbie to a whole genre, because I've not really read genre romance before. I guess I've read classics that get sort of called romances like Jane Austen for instance but there you know there's more going on with those um you know Wuthering Heights I would actually class that as a horror novel um so yeah not really read romance not 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 out of snobbery after all I read genre westerns which are shelved in public libraries next to the romances so uk public libraries at least the ones i know still have as well as the alphabet alpha, alphabetized shelves of regular books they have a romance section where the books are just there they're not in alphabetical order of author or of anything else and same deal with westerns there's just a kind of amorphous mass of that kind of book obviously some books will kind of not be put in that section so a cormac mccarthy western is probably going to be in with the literature books rather than with the, the rest of the westerns but the sort of bread and butter high volume genre stuff is treated in that way as if the the readers aren't going to care about the writers they're just going to grab you know six romances for that week or whatever which i've always thought is an interesting phenomenon it's um maybe that's one reason that readers will mark up the books so they know which ones they've read so those kind of books you'll often find either people will put their initial on a particular page so maybe they always put let the letter of their name on page 17 or they'll have some sort of symbol that they'll put in the pack so you find these clusters of weird symbols as if there's some sort of um, alchemical grimoire being created out of the books anyway yes so not snobby read other stuff but somehow not romance i guess it's a genre thing and how they're targeted so as for this one it's traditionally published definitely it's a division of penguin and there's all sorts of fancy stuff about the book that uh you know foiled letters um this die cut cover in this curvy shape an extra cover on the inside showing two refugees from a clothing catalogue in a clinch who are actually pretty reasonable renditions of the the characters in the book so mystic creek series based on a place i think i grabbed it because having accidentally become a devotee of virgin river on the telly thought it might be a similar sort of thing and it, it actually is so mystic creek this place small town in oregon um folks there are very very nice um, you know they have their problems but they're they're basically good people uh, michael romeo made a video about this kind of thing about the kind of comforting worlds in certain book series that you can just slip into and um, I'll, I'll link to that video as well in the description uh, and it's, it's sort of one of those but here's the thing the thing of Mystic Creek is damaged people come there escaping from something. So in this one, 
um, Amanda is escaping from a, an abusive marriage, kind of on the run with her young child. And then there is Jeb, a kind of lonely, a lonely carpenter. He makes high end furniture. And because of the, uh, the weather, it's called Silver Thor, did I say that? Um, so in this icy, dangerous weather, they're thrust together and the romance ensues. And there's quite a nice idea that she, she writes little notes and hurls them out into the wind. So he already knew that there was this lonely person around writing the, writing the notes. So that's the story. I'm not sure if you'd call it cosy, because although Mystic Creek is a cosy place, the domestic abuse stuff is actually described quite brutally and graphically, so it's sort of um, got a kind of adult feel as well. In fact, there's a thriller subplot, so the abusive husband, you kind of know he's going to show up and then, you know, what's going to happen. So, yeah, I liked it. Oh, it's also got a sort of religious aspect too, so... Uh, thinking of other stuff I've read, I read Religious Romances in, in week two uh, when it was sweet or spicy and I thought they would be sweet. And this has this has some of that as well in that the, the sort of utopian aspects of Mystic Creek, one thing is it's underpinned by faith. So it is like a holiday in utopia and that's something that's quite sort of um, refreshingly energising about it probably isn't the series for me it can go back to the charity shop and the dance continues but certainly grateful to the autumn amour challenge for leading me to i suppose explore a sort of unconscious curiosity i would have looked at books like this wondered what they're like but it would it, it would kind of be yeah but you can't read it and then you think actually why not their words, I can read words, so so that's what I've done. Um, other things, Autumn Amour has led me to read Mills and Boone. So Mills and Boone, massive publisher in the UK. It's it's Harlequin in the States. I think they're the same company now. Interestingly, Mills and Boone originally didn't just publish romances. In the early 20th century, they published things like Jack London novels. So, little fact for you there. The project I'm working on to do with the Mills and Boone European romances, so I will be making another romance video when I've got everything together to be able to do a deep dive into those. And also mention the religious romances, and then there was the, the 60s social realism of Sparrow's Yard also good. So yeah, great stuff all around really. Um, cheers for Autumn Amour. Hope people who've watched these have enjoyed them. Um, people who know about cosy romances might be able to help me out as to whether the way I've described Mystic Creek is that whether that's cosy or whether cosies would be even cosier and you wouldn't have the contrast between the the sort of cosy resolution and the, the better situation that's arriving with with a kind of um, grimmer backstory. I don't know if that's allowed in the rules of coziness, whether the International Council of Coziness would approve such things. I think I'll stop talking now and make a video about something else. So thanks for watching. Um, Great to see people subscribing, liking, commenting, etc. And I will see you again soon.